is Becky and this is a hand knit letter. It's my show and tell, I guess, of all the things that I have made or plan on making. Heavily focused on knitting, but not necessarily always knitting. Um, so yeah, so this is my first episode. You probably gathered that by the title of the episode. <laughs> always thinking. So a little bit about me. You may recognize me or my voice from a knitting podcast that I co-host with my BFF, Casey, um, of Young Folk Knits, and it's called the Young Folk Knits Podcast, and it's on available on anywhere you get your podcasts. And so we do that once a week together, and um, she's encouraged me to do <laughs> a video-type podcast, and so here I am. I don't know if um, I'm going to do this all the time or if it's, I'm just going to do it leading up until Rhinebeck. I'll just see if I enjoy it and I'll see if other people <laughs> enjoy it and if that's so then I'll keep on going as long as I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to talk about Rhinebeck. It's the New York Sheep and Wool Festival that happens once a year in Rhinebeck, New York, but the festival itself is not called Rhinebeck. Um, but there is a few little things that happen before and after. Um, well, not really after. Well, maybe after. I'm not an expert. <laughs> this is the first time that I will be attending, and so I don't know a ton about it. But um, there's an event that I'm going to before called Woolen Folk, and, and then the actual Sheep and Wool Festival that I'll be attending um, on Saturday. So I'm trying to plan some outfits um, to wear there because if you're gonna, if you're into making things like your clothing, and accessories and things like that, um, that's where you want to show it off because other people also enjoy that who are coming there and so you can kind of nerd out together <laughs> on all the things that you have made and show people who appreciate the the things that um, go into making handmade clothing. And so I guess to start off the first, <laughs> the first thing, <laughs> um, I'll talk about what I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing a new top that I sewed um, basically to be a wearable muslin to see if I like this pattern for my Rhinebeck outfit and this is a vintage pattern um, I've got it right here that was my mom's and I looked it up and I can't remember if it's from 1982 or 1983 um, it's one of those I think um, and I thought that would be kind of fun to wear a top that she and I know she's used this pattern because the pieces were cut out and there was a lot of notes everywhere so um, I thought that would be kind of fun I'll show that a little close or closer hopefully that's in frame I made this one view number one and I made it out of just some fabric that somebody gave me <laughs> and so it wasn't it wasn't something I had plans for. It's not a precious fabric. Um, not that gifts aren't precious, but they were just clearing out their their stash and they didn't have use for that. And I thought it was pretty. Um, it's got a, I don't know if you can really tell, but it, I'll get up a little bit closer so you can see. It's got a floral print on it and it's just, I believe, a quilting cotton. It's probably not the best fabric for this shirt. Not not for the fact that it doesn't lay okay, but just that it's printed. <laughs> and so I didn't take that into consideration that you can see that underneath the sleeves. Um, what to say about it? I do like this pattern. I think it's very cute. I can tuck it into pants. I did have to crop it probably by six inches. It was, it's very long. Um, but I'm happy I made it because I know that this is not the top. <laughs> that I'm going to make for Rhinebeck. Um, I want to make myself a, a top and a pair of pants to wear um, like a matching outfit and this isn't the one. It is, it is cute. I do like it. I will wear it but I'm on the search for another pattern. Um, Casey of Young Folk Knits, she made a couple Augustina boxy tops from the fabricstore.com. It's a free pattern and I'm leaning heavily towards that for my next for my top. And I'll just show you the fabric that I'm going to make uh, my little out matching outfit a set out of. It is a burgundy type linen 
and I've got plenty of fabric to do pants and a top or pants and a skirt, but I, I would like to do, um, no, not pants and a skirt, pants and a top or a top and skirt. <laughs> Otherwise I would have, that wouldn't be good. Anyway, I think I'm going to go for pants and the pants I want to make are the free range, free range slacks. I, I think by Sew House 7, I will make sure that that's correct. Whatever that pattern company is, I will link it down so you can look at that and see what it looks like. I'm not savvy enough to put a picture here yet or over here or over here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm still learning. And so <laughs> once I figure that out, I'll put that in there. <laughs> so this outfit is mainly to be worn with Dun, 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 my first finished object for the Rhinebeck Caravan Cow that Casey and I are hosting over on Instagram. And it is a knit along. Well, we call it a knit along. That's what K-A-L stands for. Um, but it's a make along. You can sew, you can weave, you can do whatever you want to make an outfit. A handmade um, object can be an accessory, it can be socks, it can be anything that you want. It can even be beaded earrings, whatever that you would wear to the festival or if you're not attending whatever you would wear if you were going so everyone's invited to join along anyway you can post your pictures on instagram under that hashtag i apologize i am a rambler and i'm someone who boards the tangent train <laughs> quite frequently i'm actually captain of the train anyway so this is the penguono by stephen west it is um, knitted to be worsted weight and um, the pattern is whatever your gauge is is whatever your size is so I wanted the worsted weight size so I um, use worsted weight yarn but I also held some yarn double that wasn't necessarily um, worsted weight to get to that weight anyway so here's the front this is mainly made out of scrap yarns I hope you can see that um, mostly out of scrap yarns, mostly hats that I've knit other people. And I've had, you know, probably 20 grams left of each ball. And I had a lot of those. And, and so, um, not the sleeves and not the collar and waistband. Um, they were not leftovers, but everything else was leftover. So I was really pleased with that. Um, mostly Malabrigo colors. And I held it with a strand of lace weight. Malabrigo, just lace, no mohair, um, in the color pearl for my um, marling, because I thought that would tie it in together good, and um, so that's why I chose to hold, hold it double um, with everything except for the cream, and the cream is Cascade Eco Merino, and it's the DK, and this color is Silver Mist. And so I held that with that. And the back is my favorite. It's got welts on the back, which is my first time doing welts. And welts are fun. Welts are my jam. So I will look for things with welts because I really liked. It reminds me of Rainbow Bright or an 80s puffer jacket, which I love because I'm all about the 80s nostalgia. <laughs> but um, let's see, what else can I say about it? I cropped it. A few inches shorter and what else did I do different I went down a needle size it calls for a worsted it calls for a needle size in the pattern it's a paid for pattern um, and then it gives you your you know your needle to get the gauge for that I went down a needle size because um, I wanted just a teensy bit smaller between you know from the the circumference that I was going to get the bust circumference I wanted it a little bit smaller so I went down a needle size for mine I believe I knit mine at a nine, no, maybe an eight. Anyway, that's what I did and I'll try it on. I'm not so sure how good this will look with what I got on, but at least maybe you'll be able to see how it looks on. And this is gonna be so smooth. <laughs> it's like wrestling an animal. So this is what it looks like on, and I really do like it. I really, really do. And I think I'm. This is what I want to wear this with. So I think that the burgundy, like, 
outfit will look kind of like a jumpsuit because it's matching and with this underneath it and maybe some retro sneakers I think it's gonna look cool or look like an old lady trying to look cool <laughs> anyway I'm really pleased with this it was a lot of fun go make yourself one that is my last finish object um, I will talk about what I am currently knitting on so in here this is a Japanese knot bag um, I don't remember who makes the pattern but you can find it on Etsy it's it's a pattern that you can make so I'm gonna show you something super boring <laughs> I've got ribbing in navy <laughs> and that's all I've got on this hat so far but this is gonna be my hat and peak by Maxim Sierra or Max the Knitter and I'm making it for my husband to wear and I want to make it so he can wear it to Rhinebeck but also we're gonna go on a little adventure in the mountains and I'd like to have that for him there because it's gonna be chilly when we go but then also to take some pictures because I think that would be nice to take pictures in the mountains wearing this hat <laughs> okay so my colors for the hat are um, this is cascade this is Cascade 220 Sport. And so this is the color. Oh no. I don't know, guys. Who knows? Color number 854. It had a name. I got this from Wool & Wool & Co. online. It had a color name at the time when I when I bought it. So this is the ribbing, and then it is going to go into this like bluish color. Um, and this is the Fiber Company Luma, and then it's going to go into this color Cascade. This is a color work hat. I should have said so. Um, this color Cascade 220, this is Picante, and then we're going to go into this gray color, which is the Fiber Co. Luma, and check out those balancing skills. Um, so I think they'll look really cute. I'm not going to make the pom-pom because he would not go for that, but I'm not a pom-pom person either. I think they're cute on other people, just not on me. And anyway, so that's going to make that for my husband. The next thing I'm working on is, um, let me pull that out. This is the Tessellated Vest by Andrea Mowry. It is her pattern for Rhinebeck. Every year she makes like a pattern that everyone knits and she debuts it in time for everyone to knit it and then wear it to Rhinebeck and then meet up and kind of take pictures together like one big knitting family. <laughs> anyway, so this is my tessellated vest. Um, she has a tessellated pullover and a tessellated vest. Um, I'm making the vest because I, obviously. Um, anyhow, I am making this vest out of Quince & Co. Their sport weight in the color Peacoat. That's the navy in the ribbing and the main color. Um, the variegated yarn is Spin Cycle, uh, dyed in the wool, and it is in the color Castaway. And then my Floofy Floof yarn is the Fiberco Cero in the color Angelic. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit closer what this looks like as far as like the way the colors are changing. Okay, okay so here's the way the color is changing within the vest and I really like it. It's really cute. So I'm enjoying it. I'm at the point to split for the, not really sleeves, but for the front and the back and make the armholes. The length that she has called for in the pattern will work for me because I'm not very tall and um, I think I'm around the same height or near, you know, I'm close to what Andrea Maori is in height. So I think that that should fit pretty good. Um, I'm knitting mine with a little more positive ease, um, just cause I was at, I'm generally between, it's like if I knit my size, I'll get like 
three inches of positive ease, um, the size that I normally knit. Um, but I like things bigger and I like things more oversized. And if I knit this size, I want to say I got seven or eight inches of positive ease, which might be something that I regret, but that's the problem for me in the future. <laughs> so I really am enjoying knitting on that. Okay. So future plans. <laughs> I have um, some plans that I want to, this is all kind of Ryan Becky plans. Um, oh, this is my um, Young Folk Knits bag. And Casey has, oh, okay, that's better. Um, Casey has a merch shop. See, this is why I don't like floof. All the time, it's in my face. And I just, I'm like being attacked by it. I think it's pretty, but, and I also think it's kind of like, I feel like it's there even when it's not there because I hate when it's there. So I'm constantly thinking, is it there? So it's always like fluff in my nose. Um, okay, back on subject. This tote is, <sighs> but it is there. <laughs> okay, so this tote I got from Casey's merch shop. Um, uh, there's a link I want to say at her on her video podcast and I think in her Instagram as well. So you can go and look at it. So I got this little tote to represent. Um, okay. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I need a shawl. If I have time, I'll make one. I've got some Quince and Co that I want to use up. Um, I'm thinking about this one. This is Chickadee, which is sport weight, and it is in the color Honey. And I think a, a shawl would look nice. I'm not, what do, you, what do you think it'll look? I mean, it'll look nice with the, this, especially. Cause I'm thinking if it's hot and I don't wanna wear the vest all day, I, I will want to wear, I want something knitted on me, right? So, um, if I don't want to wear the vest all day, I was thinking I would make, gosh, back up. I thought I would make a shawl out of this and I'm thinking of a shawl <laughs> that I don't remember the name of and I'm recording on my phone. So tough luck. I can't look it up. Um, I'll look it up for next time. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking about making that cause I think that kind of looks nice together. And this is my fabric for my dress that I want to sew for Rhinebeck. It is a pattern by Sew Liberated. Everyone knows about it. It's the hinterland. I'm gonna make the three quarter length sleeves with the button placket. And I'm gonna get some little wood buttons. I think that's kind of cute. And it's just like a blue denim -y color. I think I've decided this is a linen blend. It's a heavier linen blend. Um, so I don't think it'll be that wrinkly. Anyway, so I think that will look cute. Um, this might look good with it, right? The vest will look good with it. Let's let's see if the vest will look good with it. Let's pull that out. Hold your horses. I haven't even held it up together. I think that would have been my first thing. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. So. That I'm thinking of wearing as my outfit. But if I'm hot, and I especially don't want my trunk like to warm up really hot, that makes me feel nause nauseated. Does anyone else feel that way? So if it's not cold there, I don't know if I can handle this for very long. Um, so I was thinking then maybe a shawl that I could wear like a scarf with this. I think that looks pretty. So that's an option. Um, yeah, those are my plans. The rest I have in here is just to kind of show what I what I bought recently that I mentioned on the knitting podcast, the, the audio podcast. I generally won't do acquisitions just because um, not that I don't have I don't have a problem with it. I actually enjoy seeing what other people purchase and um, and learning about different yarns and colorways. But I also don't want people to feel like this is a podcast where I talk about um, the things I have that you don't have. I don't really like that feeling. <laughs> so I don't want other people to feel that way either. 
Um, this is just some yarn that I had mentioned and I wanted to show people the colors just because they might be curious. Um, I got this at the Arkansas Yarn Crawl and this one is um, Mano So Uruguay in the color Sealing Wax and I really liked that because I love to write letters which I'm very bad pen pal right now. I have a lot of letters that I need to go out. Um, so I thought oh, the, the name got me, but the color got me. And I thought this would be such a beautiful um, one, Lone Skein Shawl by Hohe Locatelli. And I think that's, I think it's nice. And I, I really like orange reds. I think they look good on my skin tone because I have a very yellow undertone and I think it, it looks decent with my skin tone. <laughs> so there we go. I got that. And then when we were at Arkansas Yarn Co, I picked up a skein of Dragon Horde yarn in the color The Raven. And it is a very dark, um, very dark teal, I would say. It's a hard color to describe, but I'm thinking about this for the Muscle Burra hat. I think that would look nice. I think it would look pretty good with my hair color. Yeah, so I thought this would be a really cute hat. It will go with a lot of things I have, kind of like my color palette type of thing. So yeah, well, I think that's all that I have left to talk about. Um, thank you very much for stopping by and checking out this channel. And if you like what you see, then you are very, easy to please. <laughs> I would love to hear where you're watching this from. If you want to leave a comment that says where you live or where you're from, uh, that'd be great. And um, until next time, happy knitting.